Swaminathan Nair, Consulting Editor with ET Now. He joins us now. What a pleasure and always delight to have him on ET Now. Good morning, sir. Is it late night for you? Have we bothered you really late in uh, late in your time zone? No, 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 no. It's only nine thirty at night right now. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad actually. Yes, well, yes. It is. It, it is. Uh, it is. Looks like. Uh, Looks like it's going to be a new sunrise. I mean, looking at how things have moved post the state election, I mean, there is no late night there. Yes, I would say that uh, global investors are not particularly interested in the state elections. They look at the larger picture. I think they've already assumed that Mr. Modi is going to win in 2024. Uh, this is some confirmation of what they were going to do, but I don't think it changes their view that Modi is going to win in 2024. And whether he wins by another 10 votes or another 10 less votes, I don't think is the key thing. But yes, the markets like continuity. Uh, particularly, I think they would have been worried if there was a Congress sweep. Then I think uh, something like the Adani shares might have had a question mark against them uh, because of certain fears. But as it happens, so there's continuity. Uh, it has to be said that the FIIs have not been all that keen on India. It's not that money has poured into India the whole year. Uh, but the global outlook as such appears to be not as bad as earlier thought. The U.S. economy appears to have had a soft landing. Uh, they raised the interest rates and yet they have brought down inflation without having a recession. Quite rare. Doesn't happen very often. But the U.S. economy, having achieved a soft landing, it's roaring ahead with uh, unemployment as low as 3.9%. In those conditions, I think they will begin to have a more upbeat thing on the whole world economy, where, of course, India is now seen as a new kind of locomotive uh, taking the place of China. Still not comparable to what China used to be, but I would certainly expect significant flows to be coming in in uh, 2024. Uh, however, as far as FDI is concerned, uh, we still don't see a huge inflow. Uh, I don't think the foreign investors are that keen on PLI uh, on those particular areas. We have Tesla, which is desperately trying to negotiate special conditions. I frankly see no reason why Tesla should be given any concessions because when the Ford and General Motors and the others came in, they did not get special concessions. So why should one particular car company be given these concessions? So, uh, But I, I think Tesla will definitely one way or other come into India because it needs India more than we need Tesla. It will come. So there will be FDI, but I wouldn't put a bet on, for instance, a big new fab uh, fabric uh, silicon fabrication plant coming up in 2024. I think on some of those issues, the foreign investors are still waiting and seeing. But yes, overall, India is a good long-term bet. Right. And, you know, Swami, I think the policy continuity, what's happening on ground, whether FDI participation comes back, whether FIIs come back or not, just domestically, the market is going to be charged up, be it what's happening on ground with infrastructure, construction, all the development around uh, India's work on renewable energy, etc. That momentum in itself is good enough. Yeah, I, I would say from the point of view of, for, I mean, I can understand Indian investors getting a little more charged up with us, but the foreign investors have already built in the notion that Modi is getting re-elected in 2024. That being the case, they don't really see that the state election would have changed things very much. Even if the BJP had done somewhat worse and lost a state or two, I don't think for a minute they believe that Modi will not return very, very solidly. That's why I thought that, you know, the foreign markets may not get charged up by this news. It, it's already built into their expectations. Uh, Swami, sir, uh, if one has to really look at the trends in the state election, there have been instances, let's say, in the past where the state election wording is not sync with what the central election cycle is. But do you think this time it is different because the mandate is so overwhelming and the mandate is so clear that looks like we already know what will happen in 2024 now? 
I would say that in the past, when you find that, you know, in the December elections, you have one result and in the general election, you have a different result. In those cases, there was discontent. So what you actually were seeing was an anti-incumbency trend. The incumbents were beaten in the state election. And because there was another party in power, like Vajpayee, the income anti-incumbency hit the central government also. You have to think at this point of time, whatever you saw, was it an anti-incumbent who vote? And if you look at the results in Madhya Pradesh, where the BJP had a huge increased majority, you cannot say that anti-incumbency is the general story. Yes, it, the, it was there in three other states. Not a general story because Madhya Pradesh did very well. So in these conditions, when anti-incumbency is not a strong trend, I would not expect that to affect the central election. I would, I mean, I think most people expect the BJP to be returned with a smaller majority. I think that would still be the overall kind of uh, consensus. I wanted to understand your take as well now with this outcome in terms of the fact that we've already seen some populist measures announced. Do you see potentially some more coming in in the run-up to May? And how are you seeing this impacting the overall fiscal consolidation? Sure. No, I would say that the important thing that has happened is the global conditions. I would say the U.S. soft landing is a very big positive for the markets. And once that is, once you get that optimism, it spreads there was a considerable fear that 2023 is going to be a bad year. There were people who feared a hard landing and a recession in the USA. There were people who feared a lot of carnage in some European markets. Uh, the impact of Ukraine was unknown. It was, uh, it was a question mark. So I would say many of those things have gone. It's very clear the US had, had a successful soft landing. Uh, so when you see the conditions of, you know, it looks like 4% GDP growth this year, which is far above what expectations used to be. With the prospect of continuing further, uh, the labor market is red hot with 3.9% unemployment. And there has been a rise in wages, but it has not translated into high inflation, which is a very positive sign. So I would say these are the conditions that would drive the optimism of the markets. What's happened in India would be a small stir. I mean, some India's specific funds may think, well, it's slightly better than before. But yet I would say they already have assumed, all of them have assumed continuity, all of them have assumed that Mr. Modi will be re-elected. That is why I don't think these state elections would make very much difference, especially when Mr. Modi has won quite well anyway. Had he lost very badly, they might have had second thoughts. That is not the case. So purely from a market standpoint, if I say that the real setup based on the outcome of the state election is following that this time, it's not going to be Kashmir, it is not going to be triple talaq, it's not going to be free toilet, it's not going to be free cylinder, it is going to be simple financial inclusion and economic growth. Do you think that is going to be the real core of 2024 BJP's positioning? I hope so. I hope that is the case. Uh, you never know. Uh, I mean, nobody expected the incident of uh, which led to the Balakart bombing. And that Balakart bombing, I think, added, according to my Economic Times poll, seven percentage points to the BJP's popularity in 2019. Uh, I mean, it was such a boon that some people even speculated, you know, was this a managed thing that, that happened? And will Modi try to manage a similar incident right now? I would say right now, there is no need to get into that kind of thing. There is no need to up the ante with Pakistan on the border on any of these issues. Uh, there is no need to up the ante on the Sikh Khalistani issue either, despite what we have seen in the USA and Canada. I think the BJP believes that its performance has been good and it can win on the basis of performance. Uh, while others may disagree that there was some communalism in the state elections, I would say basically no. Basically, it was an argument about development. And we saw this, I think, in the Uttar Pradesh election when we went out there. 
Uh, I attended many of those rallies of Modi, of Adityanath. There was no communal message going out. The whole thing was, have we not performed well enough to be re-elected? And the electorate said yes. I think the same thing has happened in the state elections. So I imagine that is going to be the approach of the BJP in the general election too. Just curious as well to understand your take as to, um, you know, what this may, means in terms of Congress, the new uh, coalition as well, INDIA or India. How do you believe now, uh, you know, the leadership uh, will likely uh, continue over there? Well, the fact that the Congress has won Telangana is a plus point for Rahul Gandhi without doubt. Now, I would say, you know, last year he was called Papu and nobody, I mean, people laughed. If you said the word Rahul Gandhi, there was a snigger. But after the Padyatra, after they have won in uh, Uttarakhand, they have won in uh, Karnataka, I mean, it, it is no longer just seen as useless Papu who is incapable of doing anything. I mean, I remember within the Congress party, I heard the sniggers. Oh, na bahu lata hai, na bahu mat lata hai. And this, this kind of joking was taking place openly. Now they are seen as a serious contender. So at the, you can definitely say that they will be the leader of this INDIA. Uh, they will be the leader of this movement. Let us see how far they get. I don't think even they hope that they're going to win a majority. But if they can have a significant improvement in votes, they will say, okay, we are now well positioned and let us continue the fight. Uh, right now, the ground is not particularly uh, good for us, but maybe in the future, you have no idea what happens. One year is a long time in politics and maybe something will come out of the sky. So I would say, yes, the opposition will be happy enough with the election and to say, let's consolidate behind the Congress party. There will be no question that the Congress party should be the leader.